What's up everybody? Ryan Pulis here from the Pulis Group with today's real estate tax tips. We're a tax and accounting firm specializing in tax planning for real estate investors and business owners. Today we're going to talk about depreciation. This is a deduction that can save you thousands of dollars in taxes. What is depreciation? Depreciation is an annual income tax deduction that allows you to recover the cost or other basis of business or investment property over a number of years. Depreciation starts when you first use the property for your business or for the production of income. Section 167A of the Internal Revenue Code tells us that there shall be allowed as a deduction an allowance for the exhaustion, wear and tear of property used in a business or for the production of income. Depreciation is often what allows an investment property to cash flow while showing a tax loss. It's sometimes referred to as a phantom expense. This is because there's no cash outflow, but you still get the tax deduction. Depreciation is not optional. Many people are surprised to learn this. Depreciation reduces your tax basis each year by the amount of depreciation allowed or allowable. If you do not take the deduction on your tax return, your basis is reduced anyway, and you miss the deduction to offset income. When you later sell that property and have recapture, the IRS is going to calculate that tax as if you took the depreciation deduction, whether you actually did or not. If you find yourself in this position, don't worry. When you forget to take depreciation on an asset, the IRS considers this the adoption of an incorrect accounting method. This is something that we can fix by filing a change in accounting method with Form 3115 with your tax return. The most common items that you see being depreciated are buildings, land improvements, and personal property. This is especially true for real estate investors. Buildings are depreciated over 27 and a half years for residential property or 39 years for non-residential property. Certain improvements made directly to land or added to the land qualify as 15-year property and fall under the land improvements category. Personal property includes your five and seven year items such as equipment, appliances, and furniture. Land is not depreciated. When you buy a rental property, you must assign a value to the land and to the building. The best way to determine the land and building values is by agreement with the buyer and seller in the sales contract. When the allocations are not provided in the sales contract, the next best method is an appraisal. When an appraisal is also not available, you can use the property tax assessment by your local government. The IRS doesn't love this method, but it is allowed. You'll use the land as a percentage of the total assessed value and assign a land value based on that, and the remainder ends up being assigned to the building. So let's take a quick look at an example of how this would work using a property tax assessment. So let's say you purchase a rental property for $150,000. The sales agreement is silent on allocations, and appraisal has not been done. The property has an assessed value of $100,000 based on your local property tax records. On, on the assessment, you'll see $25,000 is assigned to the land, while $75,000 is assigned to the improvements. So in this case, 25% of the purchase price belongs to the land value. If you paid $150,000 for the property, the land value is going to be $37,500. Take that $150,000 times 25%. The remainder, the remaining 75%, would equal $112,000. 75% times $150,000. This is assigned to the building and is what is used for your depreciation calculations. The tax code allows for immediate deduction of certain property with either bonus depreciation or section 179 depreciation, which we'll talk about here shortly. Neither method applies to buildings, but cost segregation studies can help speed up the recovery by allocating a portion of the building costs to other property types such as personal property and land improvements that have shorter depreciation lives and are eligible for the bonus depreciation or section 179 depreciation. We've covered cost segregation studies in a prior video. You should go check that out. One of the most beneficial changes under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is the 100% bonus depreciation. You can now immediately write off certain assets in the first year instead of depreciating them over multiple years. 
Bonus depreciation allows for 100% depreciation of personal property, land improvements, and qualified improvement property, sometimes referred to as QUIP. As long as that property is acquired and placed in service after September 27, 2017. The 100% bonus depreciation begins to phase out in 2023 and is completely phased out at the end of 2026. You can see this on the table here on the slide. <clears throat> bonus depreciation applies to property if the recovery period is less than or equal to 20 years. So new buildings are generally 27 and a half years or 39 for commercial, so they're not eligible. But land improvements are 15 year property and are eligible. Used property also qualifies for bonus depreciation, which is new under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So as we mentioned, bonus depreciation applies to personal property, land improvements, and qualified improvement property. Your personal property includes items like equipment and appliances depreciated over five or seven years. Land improvements include items such as swimming pools, landscaping, sidewalks and drainage systems, and are depreciated over 15 years. Qualified improvement property, QUIP, encompasses improvements made to the interior of non-residential property. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act originally, originally excluded QUIP from the bonus depreciation in Section 179 rules. This was an unintentional oversight and was corrected with the CARES Act in early 2020. Revenue Procedure 2020-25 gives you the ability to go back and amend 2018 and 2019 returns to correct prior depreciation methods for QUIP property placed in service after 2017. To qualify as QUIP, the improvement must be made to the interior portion of a non-residential building after the building's placed in service. So you can't go buy a new building and carve out portions that would qualify as QUIP. These are improvements done after you've already purchased the building. There are certain items the IRS specifically excludes from the definition of QUIP. Those are enlargements to the building, elevators and escalators, an internal structural framework. Um, for example, internal load-bearing walls. None of these items qualify as QUIP. Section 179 of the tax code allows for immediate expensing of up to $1,050,000 of qualified property placed in service that's used in an active business. The limit here, the $1,050,000 is for tax year 2021, uh, 2022, they just released those numbers and I believe it goes up to 1,080,000. So similar to bonus depreciation, section 179 applies to personal property, but not to buildings. Unlike bonus depreciation, section 179 cannot create a tax loss, nor does it apply to land improvements. So land improvements, bonus depreciation only. You can use section 179 for QUIP, but again, this only applies to non-residential properties and if you own commercial properties you can use section 179 to deduct the cost of qualified real property so this qualified real property also applies to your commercial or non-residential properties just like quip so qualified real property this includes things like non-residential roofs non-residential hvacs non-residential fire protection and alarm systems, and non-residential security systems. And qualified real property must be placed in service after the building itself, similar to the requirement we have with the QUIP, the Qualified Improvement Property. <clears throat> so, as you can kind of see here, bonus depreciation is more often going to be beneficial for residential real estate, as we have land improvements that, can, that are subject to bonus. Well, Section 179 tends to favor the commercial properties with the qualified real property items here we're talking about. So to recap, depreciation is a deduction that allows you to recover the cost of business or investment property over a number of years. Depreciation is not optional. The IRS will reduce your basis whether you claim the deduction or not. Bonus depreciation is available for personal property, land improvements, and qualified improvement property, QUIP. 100% bonus depreciation is allowed through December 31st, 2022, and then phases out through 2026. 
Section 179 can be used to write off 100% of qualified property up to $1,050,000 for 2021. Section, section 179 can be used for personal property, quip, and qualified real property. The quip and qualified real property are for non-residential or commercial properties only. Bonus depreciation tends to favor residential properties while section 179 tends to be better for non-residential property. Doesn't mean you can't use bonus in section 179 for the other, you know, you're, per, you're allowed to use 179 for both residential and non-residential and you can use bonus for either, but because of the way the tax code is designed around each, you're gonna see bonus more often with residential and section 179 more often on the commercial and non-residential side especially with that qualified real property allowance on the uh, non-residential side. So that about does it for today's discussion about depreciation. I hope this video was informative and helpful. Feel free to comment below and hit the like and subscribe button. We're always taking on new clients, so if you'd like to work with us, then hit us up on our webpage at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's T-H-E-P-U-L I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P dot com forward slash contact. Thank you and have a great day.